Thank you, everyone. So just a correction, I don't work for the Open Source Technology Center. I still work for Open Source. Right now, I am in actually client computing, uh, which actually uh, is uh, something still doing Open Source across Intel, not in a specialized group. But yeah, so thank you very much. I will be talking. I mean, thank you, Luca, first for uh, uh, this topic that you have introduced. Yeah, I, I was not aware. That was really great. And unfortunately, you will not see nice pictures uh, as in my presentation as with Lucas. But actually, I was thinking this is this is exactly what uh, I'm, I'm trying to co to cover here. I mean. That, I mean, once I go into the topic, we will be able to see what, what we are trying to achieve with Zephyr. Is try to help, uh, uh, you know, going uh, up from just providing an OS with OS services or you know supporting device drivers and hardware and, 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 and keeping it at a low level to something a little bit more, you know, providing frameworks in this case for tracking animals or you know any, anything that you can imagine. So basically, the, the topic here is that in Zephyr these days we are moving really uh, away from just providing something basic like basic layers for uh, uh, firmware development or you know. Uh, uh, solution uh, development in, uh, into into something a little bit more expanded. In the context of this, I mean, what I'm when I'm talking about frameworks, uh, I'm talking about middleware or you know application or as close as you can get to an application based on top of subsystems or low-level components uh, accessing hardware uh, through an abstraction and using multiple OS services to provide basic firmware functionality. That's not something that we have done uh, over the years since the project has started, but we have been noticing a trend in the Zephyr project that there is more and more specialized uh, layers being added to support this solution or that solution, this firmware, this type of uh, product. And that's, you know, it's a double-edged sword because you know, when you introduce something that is specialized, that you only you are the only user of, that becomes a problem. Uh, that's where we try as much as possible to, to stay generic and, and, and make sure that, you know, uh, whatever you are providing uh, in the project is, is reusable by others and useful for others. So going through the history of how things have been developing. I mean, and this is usually the common case that you get with traditional Artos environment is you get basically an off-the-shelf kernel scheduler. Usually you got the, the HALs or a custom piece, the HALs from your vendor or you, you build all your own custom uh, BSP. And you do basically a whole lot of firmware development, basically all the way from, you know, logging to, you know, power management to, you know, shell networking, uh, Bluetooth in some cases, and, and so on and so on. So you, you basically build everything. And that's actually the problem we are trying to solve uh, with Zephyr these days. And uh, the problem with that is that if you have multiple firmwares, multiple IPs, in this case, that's what we have inside Intel. Uh, usually you repeat the same process for each IP or for each firmware solution that you are trying to provide. And that's a lot of duplication, right? And when the Zephyr project has started, it actually was, it was like this. I mean, we had the basic kernel, a few services here and there, some device driver support, and you could take it, start implementing your application. And as I said earlier, this is what you find in traditional Artos environments. This is how, you know, free Artos uh, works. This is how, when, when you take other commercial uh, Artoses, you take basically the, you know, the scheduler or the, 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 the kernel parts and you build on top of them. So they will not, you, you will not get any OS services. You have to come up with this. Zephyr, however, over the years, and Zephyr now, has been out since 2016, uh, has developed or added a lot of interfaces. And, and this is 
you know, to be honest here, it's a very old slide. So there are actually many, many more services there beside uh, the obvious ones that are listed here. But the whole idea was always that we wanted to make application or firmware writing simpler, easier, and we wanted to encourage reuse all the way. So what's happening is that we, okay, this clicker is, so basically we, we, we tried, anybody who participates in the project, anybody who contributes uh, or a member of the project started pushing whatever they had managed for probably a long time internally into Zephyr, making in a generic way, making that useful for all users of Zephyr. And there are many examples of that, yeah? Uh, just to name a few, for example, when the project has started, we had a very simple rudimentary logging subsystem. When Nordic joined the project, they actually had a lot of experience coming from their products and SDK. They contributed that shell as well. Uh, the, we, we, uh, power management uh, and a few other services that a lot of the members of the project have been adding all, all of the year make, and, and making these components uh, useful for everybody participating in the project so that an application writer or if you are trying to, to build a, a firmware solution, you actually just focus on the specifics of your product and not trying to reinvent the wheel uh, uh, building up things from scratch or developing things from scratch, uh, which, which takes a lot of time, a lot of resources, has, can have a lot of issues, doesn't have enough, you know, uh, probably coverage in terms of security and, 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 uh, and, and uh, testing and so on as we have in the Zephyr project itself. And mo most likely it would be tied to your hardware solution as well. So it's not agnostic. One thing that you would notice here is that a lot of these subsystem would work, never mind if you are on ARM, x86, uh, RISC V, and so on. And that's really the beauty of how we have been uh, doing that. So collaboration and reuse uh, from a rich catalog of hardware and firmware agnostic features. Uh, Application, in this case, adds the missing pieces and implements the logic on top of that. And right now, this is really the common case for, for firmware products based on Zephyr. And this is why lots of uh, uh, product makers have been actually attracted to the project and start using the project because they didn't have to worry about all of these things. And this is simplified representation, but we have really more. I mean, Laura was mentioned, obviously, Bluetooth and networking and, and so on come, come to that, which, which is usually very, very difficult to develop and, and maintain uh, when you are doing things uh, behind closed doors or on your own. So just to go into uh, examples and a little bit more of what we are trying to do, if this clicker starts working, Okay, here we go. So just, just an example, and that's something that is happening right now. Uh, basically, what we are trying to do is harness the, 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 the power of all of these OS services that we have in Zephyr, making them all work together, probably introduce additional, some, sometimes specialized subsystems to create frameworks so that Basically, uh, uh, you, you get closer to a firmware product or, or, or final product, but not quite there because it is not really specialized. So here you're talking about sensing, and there are different ways how something like that can be used. It, it's definitely not going to be tied to one product or another, but it can be enhanced uh, uh, on the application side to actually be become more specific and, and, and more, uh, you know, more unique or more differentiated from the competitor or, or like a, a similar product on the market. Uh, providing interfaces and building blocks to allow something like that becomes really a powerful area in Zephyr. And we are noticing that in a few uh, segments uh, of the project 
uh, I'm listing a few items here, yeah? So sensing, I mentioned sensing, I mean, recently we have been collaborating with Google and, uh, and, and other parties in the project into introducing uh, a framework in this case, or a subsystem that utilizes existing components in the project, like sensor drivers and so on. This is still in the early stages, but it, it, it will provide more than just being able to talk to sensors and, and tries also to uh, address different use cases and utilizing many of the subsystems that we have in Zephyr. Uh, audio is another example. In this case, the, the list of uh, uh, examples here can be actually in tree or out of tree. So we have collaborations across the open source ecosystem. So in this case, audio, for example, there's another uh, Linux Foundation project, SOF, Sound Open Firmware, which moved away from a custom Artos uh, to, to use Zephyr. And we see a lot of development and a lot of contributions happen to, to enable audio both in SOF and, and, and Zephyr itself. So this collaboration is, is very productive and, and it, it, we, are, we are moving into a, 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 fra a full framework or a solution that is in this case, which is, which is really nice, is not uh, vendor specific. So it's not something that would work only on Intel hardware or, or in XP's hardware. It's actually we have a whole lot of vendors participating in this and joining this effort. And since actually the SOF project, SOF project moved to Zephyr, that enabled other, uh, other, uh, others to join because it was only you know, possible on Extensa architecture. But now you can actually, because Zephyr supports multiple architectures, you can start doing audio uh, firmware uh, on top of other architecture, in this case, uh, ARM and, uh, and others. So that's another example. One more, which is also something we at Intel interested, uh, interested in, is the embedded controller. Uh, so over the last few years, we have seen a lot of vendors uh, doing embed embedded controller, for those who don't know, it's like, it's one of the most uh, important uh, IPs in a, in, a, in a laptop or in a, in, in a desktop or in, in, in a computer system that actually initiates and, and controls the whole boot process and, and so on. So it's something that is very important. And uh, we have been working on uh, adding all of the needed subsystems and components to allow vendors in this case, you know, OEMs like HP, Lenovo, Dell, et cetera, to, to, to take that as a reference code and uh, uh, implement uh, their own embedded controller uh, firmware. And this is something that is, is composed of different uh, components uh, that are built in Zephyr, making writing the final application of firmware much easier. So you don't have to go and uh, uh, reinvent the wheel every time you add a new feature. And a few other items there as well, yeah. But I mean, the main, you know, uh, outcome or, or takeaway from all of this, that we want to see people upstreaming generic components as, you know, weird or, you know, non-standard they might be into Zephyr instead of maintaining these things into, in their environments. And uh, uh, basically, obviously, on the project level, we have to define, you know, the line between what is generic and what is custom. And that's something we are doing. We have been doing really well uh, on the, on the uh, you know, Zephyr uh, TSC level and, and, and by reviewing contributions in general. And we also want to look at existing subsystems and components that we have in Zephyr and enhance the interfaces there to allow uh, adding additional layers on top of Zephyr and in, in improve the integration of subsystems. So I, we, we want always to look at the full solution uh, instead of like, you know, uh, uh, looking at one, system, uh, one subsystem at a time and testing things uh, in, in isolation. We want to look at how can I use like uh, a, a few components that we have in Zephyr uh, and how they work in orchestration and how we can, um, you know, make it possible for somebody to add something on top of that 
uh, and uh, in the most optimal way possible. So you don't have to worry about it in your application. Zephyr will be already taking care of that. And obviously we want to do all of this uh, and, and still uh, allow and embrace innovation and differentiations on the application side. Because if, if, if Zephyr becomes where the solution is found, then that, that becomes really not interesting for, for vendors because everybody wants to, you know, I mean, there is the competitive side and everybody wants to do things a little bit differently. And that's actually, we have seen that being done like on the EC. So, I mean, we, we, uh, on the embedded controller side where all of the generic stuff is upstreamed and made available, but there are always like also proprietary and, and you know, add value features that, you know, depending on who you are, you get access to and so on. So this is basically where we want to get to, into in enabling additional layers now that we are mature enough to actually uh, uh, also to, uh, get, get more involvement from vendors and, and get more contributions into Zephyr and make uh, all of that available for everybody in terms of OS services and, and generic components. So with that, thank you very much. Yeah. And enjoy the, the rest of the event. Yeah.